Hello, my first graders. I'm coming to you from my kitchen because I have something important to talk to you about. We are going to start learning about time, telling time. Well, what is time? Well, time is the measurement of minutes, hours, seconds that go by. Okay, when we wanna know what time it is, we wanna know well, how long has gone by in our day. Okay, so I'm coming to you from my kitchen, right? Weird place to film, because I wanna show you different ways, um, different kinds of clocks that we have. Um, there's two types of clocks. One is called an analog clock, and one is called a digital clock. So the first clock I'm gonna show you is an analog clock. Okay, and I took this off the wall. This usually comes from the room that I work out in. As you can tell, we're Broncos fans. So this is an analog clock. It has an hour hand, that's the short hand, and the minute hand, okay? And this red one that is continuing to move, there's a glare on that nice screen, hopefully you can see that. That is the second hand. Okay, and some clocks have a second hand, some analog clocks have a second hand, and some don't. So this is an analog clock, and it's an analog clock because it has a face of a clock, this round face, and it has our numbers that go all the way around it. It starts at 12 at the top, that's, okay, and we get start at the top and we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So as the second hand ticks around the clock, the minute hand is slowly, slowly making its way. It moves ever so slightly. So this is an analog clock. Some of you might have one of these in your house. You might not. Some of you might have a clock that is an analog clock that's a watch that you can wear in your arm, or maybe your a parent or grown up at home has an analog clock that they wear on their wrist. Okay, so this is an analog clock. We also have these at school. So I don't know if you remember um, looking above the door, especially last year when you were um, in school, there was an analog clock um, in, our, in, in our school above the doors. Okay. So now here's why I'm in the kitchen, because in a kitchen, you can find a lot of digital clocks. So I'm gonna move this a little closely. This is my microwave. When you look at the microwave, okay, here's a digital clock right here. It tells what time, right now it's, 929, so that means nine hours, 29 minutes. There's also two dots in between. Now you might not be able to see it on mine and I don't know how close I can get without a reflection, but if you look at a microwave in your house, you should be able to see it. Below my microwave, I have my stove. On my stove, I also have a digital clock. Oh, and the time changed. So now it's nine, just there are two dots, 9.30. Okay, so nine is our hour, 30 is our minutes. Okay, so those are two places that you can see clocks. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna head on to a different room and show you another place where you can find a digital clock. Most houses have several digital clocks because they're built into different things that we use. So let's take a look at another digital clock. All right, my first graders, I'm in my living room and you can see on my cable box, that there is time. Oh, and it just changed. So here's my digital clock. Nine is my hour, then I have two dots, 32 minutes, so 9.32. Okay, nine hours, 32 minutes. So that's another digital clock. So when you get a chance, look in your house, see if you can find an, a digital clock. I'm sure you might have them on some of the things that we just looked at. Okay, the other thing you can do is look for an analog clock. Now, analog clocks are not always in every home. They're not as popular because they don't go on our appliances. Okay, but you can check and see if you have one. You can ask uh, your grown up at home if maybe they have a watch that has an analog clock on it. So remember, the analog clock was the one that was round, right? It had the face of the clock with all the numbers, 1 to 12. Okay, so we're going to take a look at Clock. Hello, my first graders. Today we're working on page 543 in our math book. That's lesson 9.6, okay? Page 543. All right, so we've been talking about measurement, right? We've been using paper clips to measure, we've used blocks, we've used objects that we have at home. Today we're going to talk about measuring time. 
okay? So remember, time is measurement. We're measuring how long has gone by. So today we're gonna start off with page 543. And when we look at a clock, when I showed you that analog clock, we saw that the numbers went in order. One, two, three, four, five. What comes next? Yeah, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so that is the order of the clock. We start here at one and we go all the way around until we get to twelve. Then it starts all over again. Okay, because time keeps going. Time never stops. Okay, it's always ticking away. <laughs> okay, so we put our numbers in order around the clock. Okay, here's an activity you can do. Okay, you have the numbers one, two, what's missing? Okay, oh, another missing number. See if you can fill them in real quick. Go ahead, see if you can fill them in. What was missing? One, two, what was missing here? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. All right, so boys and girls, before we start working on the next page, okay, we're just going to take a peek at my clock I have. Okay, so let me grab it. So, this, and I'll let me put a paper backwards so you can see it clearly. This is just a little fake clock, okay? See, then I can move these hands around, okay? Just like we made a paper clock right here on a paper, face, faces on a paper, okay? And we call this the face of a clock. The reason why we call it a face is because it's round like a face. And when you look at a clock, that's what you look at. Just like when you look at a person, you look at their face. So it's the clock face. Now, here is a fake clock, another fake clock, okay? Here's the hands on my clock, Ooh, one stuck behind the other, okay? Now, I can move these around, right? And they can go different ways. But on a regular clock, you have two hands. And on a regular clock, you're not usually moving the hands. They move on their own. They tell the time by ticking away. So we have our hour hand. Now I like to think of the word hour. Remember, hour is a small word, small hand. And the way that I remember it's the hour hand, and when I draw the hour hand, it's like it's just barely touching. I almost like to say, I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. I'm close, but I'm not touching it. So when we draw the hour hand, we're going to make it the short hand. We're going to make it close. We're going to make it like, oh, I'm pointing at the number, but I'm not touching it. Okay. Then we have the minute hand. Our minute hand is the long hand. Do you notice? Look where it is. Yeah, it's right on top of that 12. That's like, I'm touching you. So the minute hand, minute being a longer word, right? Minute, takes even longer to say. It goes all the way through the number that it's pointing at, okay? So it's not, the hour hand is short, say hour, nice and short. And it's, I'm barely touching you, right? It's like, oh, I'm almost touching you. The minute hand is long and it's gonna go all the way through. As this minute hand goes around the clock, the hour hand slowly moves. Remember, it's the smaller hand. It slowly moves to the next number, okay? So as this one moves, this, this hour hand's going to move a little slowly too. Now mine, I move, have to move so you can see. So it's gonna move around the clock. When the minute hand gets all the way around the clock. So oh, look, it's halfway. Notice, look, see the hour hand's moving a little bit. By the time it gets all the way around, remember it was on the nine before, oh, it's stuck underneath. When the minute hand gets all the way around, back to the 12 again, the hour hand has moved on to the next number. So before we had nine o'clock, nine o'clock, now we have 10 o'clock. So if this minute hand goes all the way around, 
this hour hand's gonna slowly move to what number? What comes next after 10? The 11. So as this one goes around, this one's slowly moving. And this bell's gonna kinda help it out. Cause look, it's gotta pass over top. Oh, get stuck on each other to the next number. Okay, so the minute hand goes all the way around and gets moves to the hour hand moves to the next number. So now instead of 10 o'clock, it's 11 o'clock. All right. So my first graders, the important thing that we need to know is the minute hand is the long hand, the hour hand is the short hand. Okay. So let's take a look at the next page in our book. What does this clock show? The hour hand points to the three. It is three o'clock. Okay, say three o'clock. Write three, okay, we call this a colon, zero, zero. So three, two dots, zero, zero. So notice how when we write it like this, this looks like the analog clock, right? Like the clock that we see on our microwave or our stove, analog. Okay, so this is showing three o'clock and we write it as three, zero, zero. Okay, so the one thing that all of our clocks are missing is the minute hand. We're gonna add that minute hand in on our clock. I know it doesn't say that in the directions, but trust me, my first graders, when, when we do this, it will really help us in the end. Okay, so for three o'clock, when the hour hand is pointing right at the three, right, we say it's three o'clock. Our minute hand, our big hand, is going to go on the 12th, okay? Always on the 12th for o'clock. Now notice my minute hand that I just drew. I want you to see that my minute hand does not have any arrows. Do you notice that? I put no arrows on it. The reason why I do that is because Mrs. Bell has taught first grade for way too many years. And it is easier for us to make hands on our clock with no arrows. And when you get older and you might get yourself a fancy wrist watch, right? A watch that goes on your wrist. A lot of the fancy ones don't have arrows, okay? They just are straight lines, okay? So this shows three o'clock. So for these clocks, we're gonna work on not just reading the time, but also making sure we understand where the hour hand is and where the minute hand is. So take a look at number one says, look at where the hour hand points. Write the time. So where is this hour hand pointing? It's pointing right to the nine. So we say nine o'clock, okay? Nine o'clock. Can you say that for me? Nine o'clock. So to write that, we put the hour, hour's always first, hour is nine. We put our dots in, right? Two dots. We call this a colon, but you'll hear me say two dots. Okay, a colon in. Then we need our minutes. Well, let's see, where does the minute hand go? On the 12th, right? When we have o'clock, it's on the 12th. Very good. So when, remember, this minute hand goes all the way around the clock. When it gets to 12, it starts over. So think about it, when we start over, we have zero, zero. That means we've made it all the way around. We're gonna start off with no minutes, okay? So it's nine o'clock. Whenever it's on the 12, it's o'clock, okay? The hour hand points right to the number, the minute hand points to the 12, nine o'clock. So let's look at the next one. Where's the hour hand pointing? Yeah, it's pointing to the one. So we're gonna put one, 
That's the hour, because it's pointing right to the one. Then we're gonna put our two dots, right, a colon. Okay, how many minutes on this side is our minutes? Well, if it's pointing right to the one, that means there's how many minutes? If that's pointing right to the one, is there any minutes? No minutes, zero, zero. Sometimes I like to say double goose eggs, right? Like you're the winner. There's no minutes, <laughs> zero, zero, no minutes. We need two zeros because always on this side when we're showing minutes, we always show minutes by having two numbers here. So when there's nothing, we need two zeros. All right, now we need to put the minute hand in. Well, where does the minute hand go if there's no minutes? That's right, on the 12, okay? Points right at the 12. Remember, all the way through because the minute hand is the long hand. Now let's look at this one, okay? Where is the hour hand pointing? Look at that short hand, it's pointing to the 11. So what hour is it? 11. So we write 11, put our two dots in, our colon. Okay, are there, okay, how do we read this clock? It's 11 what? It's pointing right to the 11, so we say 11 o'clock. Okay, so that means how many minutes? Zero minutes. 11 o'clock, no minutes. Right, so if we have no minutes, where does our minute hand point to? Right, Where's, where do we start all over again at? At the 12, very good. Okay, so before we start working on a few, I just wanna review that. When the, when the hour hand is pointing right at the number, it's pointing right at it, we say that it's o'clock. We look at the hour, we read it, nine, and we say o'clock, because it's right there, okay? It's like, right there is o'clock. The minute hand points to the 12, because there's no minutes. That's like, whoo, we're starting all over again. So again, look at this one, right? It point, the hour hand pointed right to the one, so we said one o'clock, because it points right to it. So when it's right on it, we say there's no minutes, and no minutes means the minute hand points right up at the 12. We're starting all over again. So same thing, right? Points right at the 11. So we say 11 o'clock, zero, zero. The minute hand points at the 12 because there's no minutes. Okay, look at this one. What number is it point, what number is the minute hand pointing right to? Yeah, the six. So we say it's six, put your six down. Two dots, how do we read it? Six o'clock. So how many minutes? Zero, zero. Where does the minute hand go when there's no minutes? Right to the 12. So it's six o'clock. All right, my first graders, I want you to pause. I want you to try this one, okay? What time is it? Make sure you say the time out loud and write it down. What time does this clock show? Pause, hit play when you're ready. Okay, let's see, check our work. If you're hitting play, you have an answer. All right, the hour hand is pointing right to the seven. So what time did you say out loud? Seven o'clock. So we put our hour down, seven, two dots. How do we write o'clock? Zero, zero. Think about it when you hear o'clock, right? O, like zero. Okay, where did you put your minute hand? Did you remember your minute hand? Where does it go? Points to the 12, right? O'clock, it means we're starting all over again. No minutes, so it goes on the 12. All right, if you need to pause to fix something, you can. If not, 
Go on to number six. Look, where's the hour hand pointing? How do we read it? Say that time out loud. Draw your minute hand, write your time. Hit play when you're ready. All right, what time is it? What time did you say out loud? Oh, that the hour hand is pointing right to the five. So we say five o'clock. We write that five, two dots or colon, o'clock, so two zeros. Did you remember your minute hand? Where does it point? To the 12, because we're starting all over again. All right, my first graders, we're gonna try these ones, number seven, eight, and nine. Okay, I want you to say the time out loud, say the time out loud, then write the time in. Don't forget to go back and put your minute hand in. Okay, where is it? Hit play when you're ready to check. All right, let's see how we did. Our hand's pointing to the four, right? It's pointing right at it. So we say four o'clock. We write it by putting our four, two dots, zero, zero, right? For o'clock. Where did you put your minute hand? Remember your minute hand? Goes right through the 12, right? We're starting all over again. So four o'clock. And our minute hand through. All right, let's check this one. What time is it? Our hand's pointing to the 10. So we say 10 o'clock. We write it by putting our 10, two dots, our colon in, zero, zero. Okay, where's our minute hand? All the way through the 12 for o'clock. We restart our minute. All right, look at this one. Where's our hour hand pointing? It's pointing at the six. So we write our six, two dots. How do we read it? Six o'clock. Put our two zeros in. Where do we put our minute hand now? Yep, on the 12, all the way through, six o'clock. All right, my first graders, I want you to pause. Try 10, 11, 12. Read the time, okay, read the time. Write the time, okay, don't forget to put your minute hand in. All right, you're hit and play, you're ready to check. Look at this one. Oh, hopefully you didn't get tricked on this one. Where is the hour hand pointing? What number? 12. It's pointing at the 12. So we put our 12, our two dots, our colon in. 12, what do we say when it's pointing right at it? 12 o'clock. So our two zeros, right? Starting over, o'clock, right? O'clock. Okay, where do we put our minute hand? Yes, I know it's funny, right? But we put it all the way through the 12. It kind of goes right on top of each other. Remember when I had my little clock, right? And things would get, it would get stuck. Okay, same thing. They can go right over top of each other because for it to be o'clock, that minute hand has to be right there through the 12. Okay, look at 11. Did you write one o'clock? Right, it's pointing directly at the one, so we say one o'clock, two zeros. Your minute hand should be pointing at the 12. Okay, one o'clock. All right, this one, the hour hand is pointing right at the three, so we should have said three o'clock. So I put my three, two dots, zero, zero. Put my minute hand in, goes right up here through the 12, three o'clock. All right, if you need to fix something, you can pause. If not, I'm going to keep going down here at the bottom. Okay, it says on Ray's clock, the hour hand points to the nine. 
circle, raise, clock. Okay, which one of these clocks is the hour hand pointing right to the nine? Is this pointing to the nine? Nope. Is this pointing to the nine? <gasps> yeah, it is. We want to circle it. And let's just check this one out for fun. Nope, pointing to the 10. So this is raise clock because the hour hand points right at the nine. Okay, we're gonna turn the page. Okay, math on the spot. Remember, you can watch the video to that. Which time is not, not the same? Circle it. Okay, so there's three different things right here. One of them is not the same. So look, at, let's look at our words first because sometimes that's easier. Look at this, one, two dots, zero, zero. How do we read that? It's one o'clock. Look at the words, one o'clock. Is this the same as this one? It is. One, two dots, zero, zero is the same as the words one o'clock. They just wrote the words out instead of making it look like a digital time. So these two are the same. Now, which one of these clocks, these analog clocks, shows one o'clock? Because if this is one o'clock, this is one o'clock, one o'clock. Which one of these is one o'clock? Look. This one, the hour hand's pointing to the 11. The hour hand's pointing to the one. What do you think? Yeah, it would need, this one's the same, right? That is one o'clock, right? The hour hand's pointing at the one. So this one is not a one o'clock. This is actually 11 o'clock. This is the wrong one. It's the one that's different, so we circle it. Look at number 15. Man, Manny leaves for school at eight o'clock. Write and draw to show eight o'clock. So let's write it first. How do we write eight o'clock? So what do we put first for eight o'clock? The number eight, right? We put our hour, eight, and what comes next? two dots, right, or colon, o'clock. What do we put for the minutes for o'clock? Zero, zero, that's eight o'clock. Now we need to make the clock here show eight o'clock. All right, so where does the hour hand go? What should it point to for eight o'clock? The hour hand points to the Eight. Now you haven't made an hour hand yet. Remember, when we make the hour hand, it points right to it, but it doesn't touch it. So we can get really close. So see how my, I'm going to get really close. And then we connect it to this circle. So you can actually go backwards if you want. Okay. I make my hour hand a little longer than the book makes theirs. Okay. It goes right, right at it, but not touching it. And if you look at my little fake clock that I had, right? When I'm pointing at the eight, look, right? It really touches it. The key is, is that we make our minute hand go longer, right? The minute hand should be like all the way smack on it, right? All right, so we have our hour hand pointing to the eight. Where does our minute hand go for o'clock? Yeah, the minute hand goes all the way through the 12, right? Remember, it's smack on it. So look, my hour hand and my minute hand are two different sizes. This one's just pointing to a number. The hour hand points to the number. The minute hand goes right through the 12. Okay. So now my clock shows eight o'clock and I wrote it on my digital clock, eight o'clock. Okay, and look. On my, here's my fake, my little fake clock. Do you see? Eight o'clock. Number 16. Look at the hour hand. What time is it? Okay, so look at this time. Okay, we're going to have to look and see. The hour hand's pointing at the seven. Hmm. Which one of these tells the time? Do you see it? 
Yeah, how do we say this? Seven o'clock. So they had other choices. Eight o'clock, that doesn't work, right? It's not pointing at the eight. Nine o'clock, it's not pointing at the nine. And look, there's 12 for the hour. It's not pointing at the 12. It's pointing at the seven. So we say seven o'clock. And you know what I'm gonna tell you to do on this clock, right? Draw that minute, draw that minute hand in. Where does the minute hand go for o'clock? Yep, all the way through the 12. Okay, so seven o'clock. All right, my first graders, you are going to do some practice with your personal math trainer.